For years and years, YouTubers have struggled to make a movie that would be considered to be successful. Well, at least critically. I don't think any YouTube movie has ever been released to theaters either. Um, you know, the obstacles keeping these YouTubers from being able to translate into the box office can be summarized very, very easily. It's basically because none of these people know anything about actual filmmaking and usually have big corporations make it for them where they just end up being a smaller part of the process or it's a Shane Dawson movie. This main issue kept from any successful translation until this year when a YouTuber duo came out of the woodwork to create one of the best horror movies of the new millennium and officially broke the stigma that has been haunting content creators for so long. But how is that even possible? It's been difficult for me to talk about my love for this movie because I'm truly at a loss for how solid of a directorial debut this was for a YouTube duo that I've been watching since I was a kid. I mean, where do I even begin? The directors Michael and Danny Philippou of the Raka Raka YouTube channel known for their viral videos that have great usage of special and practical effects worked on this movie that was then bought out by A24 and shared around film festivals before being widely released this August. It's honestly crazy because I remember them distinctly for the Ronald videos and the Mortal Kombat Fatality video that like, that was basically the first one that I saw of theirs and now finding out that these two are making a fucking horror movie that was going to be released on the big screen was such an absolute dream come true for my young self and I bet it was even greater for the people involved. I mean, the whole YouTube career spanning over a decade of content was building up to this very moment of them making a successful movie that is absolutely going to put a spotlight on them as creatives. This movie is well acted, well shot, well directed, and a great start to what could be multiple of movies using this concept. But I don't think these facts alone are what made the movie so popular in the first place. The movie itself is perfectly able to blend the elements that make mainstream horror enjoyable with the heavy themes that elevated horror tends to bring to their movies that make them enjoyable. Talk To Me is one of the few movies to actually do something like this right and also be ultimately successful because they were able to bring in both audiences in. Usually I would see movies who try to have it both ways fail spectacularly because they either spend too much time perfecting one element and not the other or them just failing at both of the elements like with the boogeyman. We'll get to that later. This overall makes the movie distinct in so many different ways and the fact that it's translating so well over here makes it, it just makes so much sense. I believe the success of this movie is honestly a game changing feat that will have the same amount of impact that Hereditary had on the horror genre. In what ways? Who knows, but the bridge has been open for any independent filmmaker utilizing social media to gain a presence. Before we further delve in, we need to talk about why this movie works so well in the first place, and the elements that it takes from the horror genre that make it so appealing to everyone. I won't say too much about the movie, but keep in mind this movie is best when you go in not knowing what to expect. Raka Raka is known for how outrageously violent their videos are and how much they just relish in it. And the fact that they kept those gore moments few and far between in this movie so they can utilize it in ways to truly disturb the audience is so inventive in an evil sense. The moments of violence in this movie are so fucked that I distinctly remember hearing the loud couple behind me utterly silent during those sections of the movie. And yes, couple, I heard everything you said, okay? Fuck you. Those scenes were truly immersive and how they were able to capture true horror with characters they made you feel attached to. The vagueness of the movie also works well in its favor because of how much they can feed into this original urban legend that works so well with this genre. The rules in this movie do exist but are never explicitly stated and are rather shown to us. The basic show don't tell rules coming into full effect here. The urban legend aspect works so well because of how the directors are just able to tap into what makes it work in the first place since you know they were literally part of the internet for a long long time and were one of the people who were successful because of it. A lot of the urban legends that the internet is really obsessed with are obsessed with this type of stuff because of how it's shared online, which the movie does through Snapchat videos in the beginning of the movie. Another thing that the movie does really, really good is the drug allegory, with the hand being a symbol of peer pressure and how people use it to cope with damaging effects. 
moments in this movie, which I won't spoil, absolutely work off of this effect really, really well. This factor makes this movie relatable to anyone who's gone through the issues of peer pressures at parties and the need to participate in crazy shit to just fit in. Their ability to explore even darker topics like grief and mental health in ways that are connected with the film to make it more terrifying for the audience is also amazing. I remember when the Boogeyman tried this shit only to completely fail because it wasn't able to do what it set out to do. The Boogeyman wanted to be a creature feature with elevated horror elements like the Babadook. It just didn't have the ability to do it. It was a very shitty movie, which I'm not going to talk about because it honestly doesn't deserve any kind of recognition. Anyways, Talk To Me dominates the two subgenres of horror it's going for, with the urban legend paranormal horror as the main setup and usage of practical gore, and the elevated horror genre with its creepy imagery with deep messaging that is reminiscent of movies like It Follows. Also, why hasn't anyone compared this movie to It Follows? But they have with Hereditary. Another major reason that added to the success of this movie was probably the word of mouth that was built throughout the year with film festivals and the connections Raka Raka has made as YouTubers. Many of the YouTubers you see reviewing the film are praising it because of how YouTubers were the ones who made it in the first place. Like that in its own right is getting its own video because it's a very big deal. The whole catalog they've been building for a decade has ultimately put them in a position where they can prove that they deserve a budget all by showing a single video that they made. Their outreach as influencers and their talent as content creators truly made a tag team effort to make this one of the bigger horror releases of the year. The fact that they are getting comparisons to one of the most acclaimed horror directors of recent times showcases their potential and has me ultimately excited for whatever they're involved with next. This movie also utilizes a smaller budget of $4.5 million and was filmed in Australia. The cast that was chosen for this film was also from Australia, which builds this level of authenticity from it. Interviews that they did also show them having a huge part in the involvement of their own movie while also having to face obstacles of studio interruptions. This probably attracted A24 who bought the movie two days after it was shown in Sundance. The Racker Racker brothers who also already have the audience from YouTube who know them for their authentic filmmaking are going to be drawn in by them just being involved with the movie in the first place, especially because of the word of mouth from all the film festivals. All these elements from the movie being truly authentic, the natural press it's getting from the current YouTube scene, the movie itself holding appealing and relatable elements that all culminate into this movie being as big as it is right now. It is on its path to beating out Hereditary, one of the biggest horror movies of A24. This movie is definitely far from perfect with some of the horror scenes coming off as more ridiculous than, and funny than anything and the character choices near the end being a bit too vague for there to be absolutely no explanation whatsoever, but it's absolutely had its impact on the scene already and only time will tell whether or not people will bite at the first opportunity that shows up.